This is Samantha Robinson. She's the VP of financing over there at the Lakers. She's trying to do a whole nother joke about toys at the workspace. You gotta pay attention when you're doing your job. You can't have toys. I was uh, dealing with this lady at the CarMax. She had, uh, her thing was Lakers bobblehead dolls. She had tons of bobblehead dolls in her workspace. Like she contacted HR about getting extra shelving units put in to house this crazy person's bobblehead doll. Bobblehead, bobblehead, bobblehead. I had to ask, I, like, I asked her like, excuse me, miss, if you're back there, uh, <laughs> Andy here, if you're back there, how do you accrue such an impressive Lakers bobblehead doll collection? This was her real answer. She goes, bobblehead a week club, my man. Bobblehead a week club. Like that's not a club. Is that a club? She joined a bobblehead a week club. Now, are you a car a week club, man? Pulling in a car. She's pulling in a bobblehead a week, not a month, like all clubs ever. <laughs> Join a club. You don't get a thing a week. You got to hold out. She's pulling in a. Let's do the math on that. How many bobble? How many Lakers players are there on the squad? Like twelve of those guys. What are the deep in the year bobbleheads that she's receiving? <laughs> You know, she's got like a filing cabinet filled with like, this is Samantha Robinson. She's the VP of financing over there at the Lakers. <laughs> this is her bobblehead. Comes deep in September. This is uh, Hector Fink. He's the uh, mascot over there at the Lakers. This is him not in his mascot outfit. Just, I was gonna do eight more of these, but you guys, you're done with it. You're like, next bit, we're done. He's mad at me. This is the worst. Show's over, everybody out. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, get ripped, that's my, my next move. Just get, thank you, one supporter. That's my personal, <laughs> that's my personal trainer. She comes with me everywhere I go. She's got, you gotta work harder, Andy. <laughs> this is, look, look at that, look at this. My buttons, there's a poop, 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 any minute now, my buttons. Cover your drinks, buttons coming in. I tried uh, P90X, I tried P90Xing. Do you guys know what that is? 90 day hardcore workout routine. I, I, I P12X'd, that's what I did. <laughs> Tapped out at 12. It's a solid pass for me. I couldn't, I, I did it the nerdiest way possible. I burned my copy from the internet. <laughs> Look, I didn't even buy like the actual thing. <laughs> it was like $300, get out of here. I'm not doing that. Pirated that bad boy. <laughs> Straight to my laptop. It didn't come with any of the weights or the resistance bands or the vitamin supplement formula that gets you ripped. Not for, not for old Andy Bargain Basement. Just straight, straight digital copies, doing a lot of these, cranking out a lot of these. Just alone in my studio apartment. When well, my wife's at work, there's supposed to be a resistance band attached to both ankles. <laughs> Not for bargain basement, just shuffling off to Buffalo. <laughs> While a guy named Tony screaming at me from my laptop. <sighs> just that winded me, did you hear that? Exhale. <sighs> I think I just had a mini heart attack right here in front of you guys. I'm hot, I have too many layers on, I realize that. <laughs> Just had that thought right now, I'm wearing a wool cap and like 19 layers. <laughs> I'm already feeling sluggish, can I nap? Should I nap on the fifth minute? <sighs> this is, I'm tired. This is how I stand, I started standing like this last Tuesday. <laughs> you think I'm gonna keep it? This is just me now, I'm an adult man who just walks around like this. I'm already aching, look, look, at, look at how I walk. This is my natural walking. I already complain about lack of parallel parking and self-checkout situations. I'm not doing self-checkout, you can't make me. All the grocery stores, they're switching over. Is anybody here good at, at self-checkout? Can anybody handle it? You're just like right in the front row, you're like, we can do it. How do you, like, I didn't take a, a cashier training course. I don't know how to do it. They say that like robots are taking all of our jobs. No, we're just doing the jobs. That you don't want to be jobs anymore, grocery stores. I didn't take, I didn't read the manual. I don't know how UPC technology works. That's 
to all grocery stores like, uh, you just do it, you can do it now. Just form a line, we don't wanna pay cashiers, do it. One at a time, there's a lot of rules. Everyone's just in line, like, how do you do this? This is so inconvenient. Why are you good at it? Will you follow me to all grocery stores? What's the technique? Oh, you were, see, that's cheating, you can't do that. Be a cashier, she says. For year, were you a cashier for years? You're the person I hate at the grocery store. It's just like, boop, boop, boop. Well, I'm like, I need help from a person who did this job. I'm like, boop, boop, boop. Someone go help him. And then I got in trouble last week. I was in the self-checkout at my local grocery store and the pit boss of the self-checkout who used to have the job that I took used to be the cashier of kiosk number six. Now he's just fuming, just fuming. And it was humid and the stickers fell off my Chiquita bananas. And I didn't know that banana codes are 4011. Does anybody know that? Just up there with three bananas. That's how I roll, three whole bananas. And he comes popping in with all this information that I didn't study. He's like, you, you're not putting in, you're putting in, you got all your stuff in the bagging area before it's bagging time, first of all. That's my first note. He's giving me cashier notes. Like I'm gunning for his former position. He's like, yeah, you're, you clearly don't got it, kid. You don't got it. You don't got what it takes. You're not punching in 4011. You gotta scoot it, scoot it and boot it. Service with a smile and I'm just mad. I got fired. I got fired from a job that wasn't even my job. I got fired from being a customer at that grocery store. They kicked me out. They're like, Put it, we're giving you two week notice, two weeks. You can shop here for two weeks. <laughs> Send it out. I'm not doing it. I'm a good, I'm a good parallel Parker. That's one thing I got going for me. Good P Parker, like one of the best. If there was like a district regional tournament for parallel parking, I'd be in like the semifinals. Good. I don't want to brag. I'm really good. I don't even, I had my new car. I got a new car and it has backup assist. Turn that off. First thing I did, OnStar, excuse me, OnStar, don't need it. Turn it off. I'm a professional. <sighs> I made a pretty adult purchase last week. I was pretty proud of myself. I bought an automobile. Thank you. See, my wife didn't do that. She was like, good, I told you to go do that. <laughs> I had to do, I went to a CarMax. Does anybody know what that is? It's like a zero service. I was like, I was looking to like wheel and deal and I don't know what this is. I was looking to wheel and deal. This is how you wheel and deal. Coming at you. Coming at you, car lot. Not intimidating. Do a lot of this. You could beat me up easily, FYI. Anybody in here? Any size, age, weight, gender? This is how I fight. Very old timey. I train by wrestling kangaroos and throwing around the medicine ball. You could easily beat me up. I go to the gym and I find that machine that's just a belt that does this. That's how I work out. I just go on the belt machine for a couple, couple reps of the old belt machine. <laughs> and then I had to do, I had to do like, Paperwork, there's no service. There was like, have you guys seen like how like toys are coming into play in people's workspaces? Like adults are filling their work areas with toys. I don't, I need that. But did you point at him? Do you do that? Like bobbleheads and crap? What is that? What do you do? What's your toy? What's your adult toy of choice? What's your adult man toy that you play with? Oh, cars, vroom, vroom. I should be doing my job, but roomy vroom vroom. That's what you do at your job? Is it one of these? And you let it go and it goes. That's fun. Those, that is fun. Where do you work? I work at the company that makes the grocery store machines. Do you really? Did you hear my workout routine? I'm coming at you right now. 
I took karate for two days. <laughs> you did? Hold on, everybody leave the room. You stay right where you are. I got a boat, you make those things? You're the worst human alive! I found you! I've taken so many years out of my life. Just make it easier. You guys are like, we're trying, everyone's idiots! <laughs> Maybe, you know what, here's a tip. Hire cashiers again. Just get them back in there. I can't believe I found you. I'm searching the nation for you. Here you are. You're a dead man. <laughs> How do you, what are your guys' meetings like? Just like, how can we make people just lose their minds a little bit more slowly each day? Oh, I'll get it, we'll add a thing that beeps loudly when you put stuff in the bagging area. Great idea, Johnson, promotion. <laughs> just add like torture devices, that's a good idea. Yeah, at the end, just a trap that holds you in if you're doing it wrong. Or just a trap door. If you don't know produce codes, you just shoot down to a dungeon. <laughs> Should work for your company. <laughs> I mean, I'm quitting this job any day now. Can't even keep my buttons buttoned. It's one of the, like right up there in the job description. Keep your shirt on, comedian. <laughs> can't even do that. <sighs> I got my eye on you the whole show. Watching you. That is crazy that you're here. I just, I like crappy food too much. I love it. I love crappy food. I ate at a Sonics today. I found the Sonics. I thought it was a fictional restaurant just in commercials. I had to venture to Utah to find the one Sonic that they advertise nationwide. Come to the Sonic off of the 15 in Utah. <laughs> New York City, come on down. <laughs> I did it, I found a Sonic. Whew. Got them tots, got that shake, baby. Did it. <laughs> I love crappy food, I love it. <laughs> Love, it's just, it's just great. <laughs> Why would you not? I was bummed the Papa John's closed down next to my house, shut down shop, went out of business. A Papa John's in America went out of business. <laughs> Did they win the Super Bowl like two years ago? How does a Papa John's go out of business? I was livid. This is how mad I was over the phone. I'm like, what am I gonna do now? You guys have my address on file. What am I gonna do? What, am I gonna go to Domino's like a hobo? <laughs> Need it. <laughs> I like to get, you know, the best part. Papa John's, it's not even their pizza. It's the garlic dipping sauce. I'm a G sauce man for life. <laughs> You get two, you get two larges, you get those four sauces, and that little, that little pepper, just a bonus. Papa John's takes care of you. Do you want this ridiculous pepper we've been storing for 17 years? Like one time Papa John was like, went to Costco and just like went nuts in the pepper section. His employee's like, what are we gonna do all these pep, no one likes pepperoncinis. These are uncut full pepperoncinis, John. Papa John. We'll give them one a piece and all of our pizzas for life. That's what we'll do. I'm a businessman. They're gonna love it. They're gonna eat their whole pizza, give rid of all their dipping sauces, and then dare each other to eat this ridiculous dumb pepper. You gonna eat it? Eat it. You eat the pepper? Remember in college when you'd, when you'd come home and like all the Papa John's was gone and it was just sad boxes with peppers in it? 
I hate you guys. I hate living here. I hate this whole arrangement. I thought of pizza night. Garlic sauce. The last of the garlic sauce. Pour, that's pouring it into the hollowed out. I'm not dumb. I'm no dummy. It's a poor man's stuffed pepper. <laughs> garlic shots. That's what that is. Spicy garlic shots. I'm an inventor. My doctor, I went to the, t I'm 35 and I already had like a heart thing from all the garlic, but my heart's like just dripping garlic sauce. It was like scary. I had like a, I told my wife, I was like, oh, this is the big one. Does anyone, <laughs> and I went to the doctor and this is, he goes, he goes, you gotta stop drinking out of straws, Andy. I'm like, that's it, that's your prognosis. <laughs> I thought I was gonna die in your office. You're like, it's straws, Andy, straws. Went from the craziest day of my life to the silliest day, like five minutes. That's what I needed to cut out, according to my doctor. Less straw time. Turns out it's impossible to give up straws, impossible. You guys ever try to go a week without using a straw? Straws are everywhere. Straw, straw, I see two straws from this stage. Straw, straw. That's the word, straw, thank you. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> Love it, that was the best heckle I've ever received. He just held, he just silently held something. You guys don't know how to be mean or heckle, do you? You're assisting. Never had a heckle assist in, assisting heckle. Here, this is what you're referring to, Andy. That's it, right there. I present to you what a straw looks like. Does anybody know who invented the straw? Marvin Stone. You learn something every day. Marvin Stone invented the straw in 1898. That's when the straw came out. This, right? That must have been a tough pitch back in 1898. And they're like, no, no, I have a whole new way to drink beverages. Heary, heary. <laughs> you know how we're all doing this? We're done with it. From here on out, no one's gonna eat at tables and restaurants. We're gonna be shoving food down in our cars. Trust me. And they're like, what's cars? Wait for it. <laughs> It's gonna happen. We're gonna be stuffing our faces in our cars. And we're not gonna have time for this crap anymore. Mark my words, for I'm Marvin Stone, inventor of the straw. We're all gonna be doing this. Everyone's gonna love making that face. You're gonna look awesome. I have a, a buddy who's like really into shape, like really ripped. I don't know what I'm doing. What is that? Is this what tough guys do? Is this, what do you do at the gym? Who here actually works out? Is this one that you do? Just lifting the heavy weights? I can't. I'm worried, you know what my big fear is at the gym is that my hand's gonna get caught in the clanky clanks of the, of the Nautilus machine. That's always my biggest fear. Like, I, I better just not. So I would totally be that guy. Like, you need some more weight on that, bro. Clanky clank, hand gone. Hand smash. I have a buddy who's like, don't go to the gym. Forget the gym. Go take karate. Karate will be the way to go. It's a full cardiovascular workout to be able to protect your lady. I was like, all right, I'll check it out. So I went dojo shopping, right? See where I wanted to start my karakin at. Here's what I found out. Only little kids take karate these days. <laughs> Go to any dojo. All the black belts are like four through eight years old. So I signed up. I was like, this ought to be easy peasy. <laughs> and on the first day, I just start chucking those little monkeys against the back wall. Yeah, looks like there's a new black belt in town, everybody. <laughs> I'm like a mountain compared to you, Trevor. Get at me, Trevor. <laughs> 
Oh, you want some Candace? Get at me, Candace. They kicked me out. They asked me to leave, day one. I didn't really kick babies in the head. You guys are like, ugh. It's just, that's as high as I can kick, by the way. That's my high kick. I'm also wearing very fashiony jeans. That's my fashion jean kick. Uh, my wife, is, has, she's a wonderful angel. She has like a real job for like adult people. She works in an office like you. She doesn't have toys. She doesn't have toys in her office. She's serious. She has like motivational cat posters and stuff like that. <laughs> Hang in there, stuff like that. Cause she is barely hanging in there with this guy. <laughs> she does. She like. She like. I do this. This is my job. That's. She finds it adorable. She's like, I'm gonna go do my real human adult job, and I'm like, I'm gonna write a medieval times bit. <laughs> Have a good day, I'm a baby. <laughs> she does, she comes out and she gives, now she gives me like little like things to do, like adventures to have while she's out. And I'm just having a day in our, in our house. <laughs> Last week, this is really, this was really a, the adventure. She, she made me, she said, she said, uh, Netflix has been um, sending us some pretty nasty emails. <laughs> like, what could that be about? <laughs> This is really what it was. Netflix is all mad at us, the Peters family, because apparently we have three hard copy DVDs somewhere in our house that we haven't sent back to Netflix. I'm not gonna find those. Who's, who still has their hard copy Netflix DVDs? When did they switch to a streaming service? Like 2007? Who like kept track of that? Who's like, oh, I know exactly where those are. I went on like a Columbo expedition. <laughs> I did not find those. I had to send, I had to send a, an apology to Netflix. I was worried my Netflix was gonna get cut off. Cause somewhere the exotic Marigold Hotel is in my house <laughs> that I've had since 2012. I just imagine like the Netflix hard copy DV department is like, you know, those like detective films where it's like one guy in a basement and he's working at Netflix in the dusty bowels of Netflix in this like cage with all these DVDs collecting dust behind him. He's like, I gotta call the Peters family. They still have I Am Sam. We need it back. Remember I Am Sam? <laughs> Two months till retirement. <laughs> I, you guys were like, no, I hate that. <laughs> Except that guy. That guy, I'm killing that one dude. <laughs> Loving it. Are you okay? He's gonna need mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Keep your eye on him. He can't breathe. He can't breathe. I had a, a friend, I was watching uh, Netflix, and I was telling a buddy about a show I'm watching on Netflix called Narcos. Do you guys know Narcos? Pretty serious, pretty serious stuff. And I was telling my buddy, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm in season three, it's right after uh, Pablo Escobar was killed uh, by the DEA. He's like, whoa, 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 spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. I didn't know that that was gonna happen. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. That's a thing that happened. Like in this world. That's not a dragon zombie show. That's a thing that happened. You can't spoil or alert history. You're just supposed to know stuff that happened before they make the TV show about the stuff that happened. Who's out there like, don't tell me what happens in Lincoln. I haven't rented Lincoln yet. What happens to this Lincoln character? No one spoil Lincoln. Let's we'll see if he makes it. <sighs> wow, you guys fade out way too fast. I'm on a beverage break over here. He was like, next one, next one. I'm not a joke machine. He makes those. Just handed him a 
America's next invention, joke machines. It's gonna put me out of a job. Now you're messing with my job, pal. What are you, like from the 40s? Look how cool and loungy you are. Gold chain, he's got an awesome chain. I wish I had your confidence, man. You got so much confidence. Just keeps doing this at me. I don't have casual point confidence. I'll never have that. Squinty eyed. I will never do that and be taken seriously. <laughs> never ever. It will always be dumb looking. I can't do it. Man, you are just cream of the cool crap. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just this. Ugh, sweating, wearing dumb hats. That's all I got. This is, this is what I got. Yeah, that's why I keep it capped, baby. Just done, I'm done. Tapping out of life. You ball too? Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's my guy. You're like, you're like the beginning, you're the, the bald dude that bugs me where like you didn't have to shave it yet. And you're just like, no, I'm gonna do it. Like, don't do it. You're not there yet. You can still have what he's got going on. Coolness. I got a round third, I got a close strong. It's important. No, you don't, is that what you said? Oh, okay, cool. You're just giving me comedy tips? Yes, please, close strong. That's my therapist. He comes to all of these. Wants to make sure I'm doing right, you know? He's like, come on, Andy, you got this. You're doing great. I, uh, uh, I got a dog uh, a couple weeks ago. I'm a new dog owner. Yeah, my wife and I are doing the whole thing. Yeah, oh, is you clapping for that? No, don't. It's... It's, it's tough. I have, a, I have these in my pockets now all the time, 24 seven. These are bags for picking up poop, everybody. I had to, they had to ask me at the airport today, anything in your pockets? Like, no, I don't think so. And then I did the worst magic trick ever. <laughs> With all my bags to pick up the feces of a living creature. <laughs> if I die today, they'd be like, man, he loved picking up poop. He had a lot of those bags in his pocket. He's very passionate about fecal removal. Look, they're just always. You open up my dryer in my house, all my jeans look like this. Like, what have you gotten yourself into? What has your life become? It's just, it's nonstop. I don't know what to do with them. Do you want is there a dog owner here? I'm handing out free poop bags. You want these? Every show you get jokes and a free poop, a couple free poopies. <laughs> Sit those there for the cleanup crew. They'll be like, what, what happened at the show tonight? It got messy, that's what happened, it got messy. I, I'm, I can't do the thing, the, the dog owner thing. I haven't gone full committed dog ownership yet. I can't do the uh, like crazy dog person thing. Do you know what I'm talking about? When people like uh, call themselves the mother and the father of a dog? Do you know these people? They're like, come to your dad, come to your mommy and your daddy. Like I can't, I can't get there logically. I just can't. My wife and I want to have kids someday. How is that going to work out? But I'm like, hey, uh, hey daughter of mine, go get, go get your brother Fido from the other room. It's dinner time. I can't make that leap in logic. I never will. Before I skadoodle, I'll tell you a story. Yeah. That's how cool I am. I say words like skadoodle. And toodles. I say toodles a lot. Did anybody here, do you know how to fight? Are you a good fighter? Have you been in, you look like you've been in some scraps. You look like you throw these kind of punches. Like the movie punches that don't look like they hurt, but they make the enemy like, oh. Those punches. I had a confrontation, a, a real, I was traveling, I was on the road working, 
and I had to stay at a hostel because I have a hotel to stay in. You, has anyone ever here stayed at a hostel? Don't do it. Don't do it. Who wooed that? Multiple people wooed that. This is a sad audience. This is, this is a true story. I stayed at a hostel. I, I went down and did some laundry. I put in a, a, a load of wash. I don't gotta explain laundry to you guys, do I? I put in a load of wash. I went up and did some hostel chores, you know, removed the chalk outline of the last tenant. <laughs> laid down a bug bomb, you know, hostel business. And I went back down to do part two of laundry, the drying, <laughs> laundry part two. Now we dry. And I got down to the hostel laundry room and a dude's wearing one of my t-shirts. Yeah, soaking wet, took it out of the wash cycle. Took it out of the wash cycle. Could have had a perf perfectly dried stolen good if he would have waited like 45 minutes. Nope. Not Applesauce Jackson. Just took my t-shirt out of the wash cycle and then just put it on and then just stayed in the room that he robbed. Cause that's, cause that's how you rob. Just hang out in the room that you just robbed. That's how all robbers rob. Whenever you turn on the nightly news and you see robbery is just a guy in a bank vault holding a sack with a dollar sign on it. Should I have left? How do you rob? Do you leave? I should have left. Should I have left? So I had a standoff with this guy wearing my bear wearing sunglasses, San Francisco 1998 t-shirt. That's custom, bro. That was made by my imagination and a Carney's can-do spirit back in 1998. And that's coming home with daddy. So I posted up. I posted up. I got real aggressive. This is me. This is called knife hand stance. I was ready to bounce one of those off of. <laughs> Bam! I posted up. Very polite though. I was like, sir, excuse me, sir. Very Midwest. Very polite, sir. Pardon me. I think my exact words were, uh, you're wearing one of my t-shirts there, pal. Okay there, sir. This, this is what he said to get out of it. He goes, finders keepers, bro. Finders, he finders keepers me. In a real life adult fight confrontation. He just flung the finders keepers card at me. I let him have the t-shirt. That's a bold card. That made me question our entire judicial system. It made me wish it was ran on that level of playground grade school logic. Apparently, your client has never heard of smelt it v dealt it. It still holds sway today. All right, that's my time. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much.